what do you mean you can't just abandon your son that you only adopted for views in the first place and it have no consequences? Hi there, I'm Rue. Welcome to my video where I talk about anything I want. Inspired by D'Angelo, I am. Yes. And today I want to talk about the Stoffers. So I've actually talked about this before, I've touched upon it just a little bit in one of my previous videos where I was talking about how people are very critical of people who choose to not have children and yet family vloggers are hailed as like, oh, wonderful people when a lot of them seem to be using their children to make money and it's really unethical. But in this video, I really want to get into the case of the Stoffers, like get into the details. So the Stoffers, Micah and James Stoffers, are a married couple who are family vloggers. They also have channels where, for instance, he has a channel where he details cars, like cleans them and other types of content as well. But they're definitely the most famous for their family channel. Now, the thing is, they got famous because they chose to adopt a child internationally. They chose to adopt a boy from China who has special needs. And that's, that was really what pushed them into the limelight and really rose their fame. And the problem with them is after having their son for two years, they've given him up. Now, the problem isn't really the fact that they've given him up because that statistically happens when you adopt, apparently, like, that, that could happen. The problem is, though, that they seem to have known that they wouldn't be keeping him forever, and they seem to have been seeing that there were a lot of problems, and yet they decided to capitalize off of his story, and it made them hella rich. Why do I say that? Because... It turns out that before they adopted him, they really like crowdfunded and they really like were like, oh, we need a lot of money to be able to adopt him. Please help us like go fund me or whatever or like buy like stuff from like a store thing and they could get the profits to have the money to go to China and adopt him. But then it turns out that they actually had the money and they didn't need the crowdfunding. So that's already a no-no. But they went to China and they got him and his the video of them getting him got like hella views. Like they've taken it down recently after the scandal and backlash of, oh, we gave them back. But that video really made them famous. Like that that's what made their channel popular. So they adopt him, they bring him home. The sad thing is it's not surprising that they had to give him up because they were completely unprepared. There were videos that they made before they got him where they're talking about how medical professionals are telling them you guys are not capable of caring for this child with these needs. Please stop this adoption. And they're like, no, no, no. Our wonderful wishful thinking and happy thoughts and prayers is just going to fix all that. And we just know that it's going to go okay. And they actually went in wanting to adopt a child with special needs on purpose because it's easier to adopt a child with special needs because the waiting lists are shorter. And apparently they didn't want to wait for a long time because, you know, they wanted those YouTube views. So they went for a child with special needs and they keep they kept talking about it like, oh yeah, we're just okay with any needs. Like if they can't even like walk or talk or anything or like have to be in like a respirator, we will want any child. And it seemed like they were just trying to go to the most extreme possible to get the most attention and for people to like them because they were completely unprepared because the kid isn't even that special needs. He has autism and he has issues because he was in an orphanage and he has some brain problems, but compared to how special needs he could have been, it's nothing. Like they said that they were okay with extreme special needs and compared to what they said that they were okay with, he's not really even that much. So it's, you know, so they get him, and the crazy thing is, what's come out later is, they never finalized his adoption. They never finalized his adoption. Like, if you were to adopt a child, you would want to finalize the adoption immediately, right? You would, wouldn't want anyone to be able to come in and say, actually, we're going to take your child away. 
they never finalize the adoption in America. There's a lot of loopholes where you don't actually have to when you like go get the kid from the country and go back to America. Basically, the adoption agency is like, okay, we're done then. They don't follow up to the point where it's like, oh yeah, you need to like make this official. And they never finalize the adoption. And a lot of people suspect that that is because they knew that they would not be a good fit for this child. So they kept him for two years and they kept posting about this kid's life. They kept posting about his most vulnerable moments, kept posting about his special needs and getting them used and getting them YouTube money. And then after two years, they very shadily, I don't know if that's a word, very shady, rehomed him through like a third party agency sort of thing. Like, here's the thing, if they had gone through with the adoption thing and made it official, they would have had to, had like an inquiry from CPS, like Child Protection Services, and they would have had to like have the state come in and be like, why are you rehoming your child? Like, we need to know if the other children in this home are okay, like what's the deal? But because they never officially finalized it, there's a bunch of loopholes where they can basically say he was never a US citizen in the first place and also we were just like a temporary family and fostering him. And this way they can just rehome him. Because if you were to have had it official and then given him up, they would have been banned from adopting again. And it's really bizarre, but like they kept posting online that they wanted to adopt again. But if they had been like banned from adopting, if they had made it official and then given him up and then CPS would have come in and been like, you people like obviously can't be trusted to be adoptive parents. You're going to be banned from international adoption. We're going to put it on your record when they didn't go through with the official thing, they will never have such a thing on their record and they can adopt from international countries again. And it's glaring because Micah posted online, we really want to adopt again. What kind of special needs would be easy to handle but would seem difficult for others to look at? Like, as in like, oh, what kind of special needs would be easy to handle but would be seem like, oh, it's just such a hard job? Literally being like, I really want all the credit for taking care of a child with special needs, but I don't actually want to do the work. So which one seems like a lot of work but isn't? It's crazy. So of course, when they rehomed him, people were like, <laughs> no and cancel culture went into straight effect. They deleted their family channel. They have a bunch of other kids too. Like, like a lot of family vloggers, they have like a lot of kids. And like a lot of family channels, it only seems like they had that many kids for the views. Because people in Micah and James' life who knew them have actually said that they didn't want that many kids before they got YouTube famous. They deleted their family channel and they're trying to like make a comeback through James's uh, garage cleaning videos. But you know, people are not happy about it. People want them canceled. Like these people literally used a child for views and made so much money and then just abandoned him. Also, they kept complaining that his therapies were too expensive while they were still his parents. They kept complaining that his therapies were too expensive, all the while wearing like Rolex and Cartier watches and diamond rings and like expensive shit. But they complained that his therapies were $500 a month. Yeah. Also what's come out, I almost forgot to mention this, is that they have had been doing interviews before everything happened, like before they gave him back and stuff. They kept getting like getting interviewed because their channel was doing really well. And they were asked like, oh, what's, what's the best business decision? Like what made your channel stand out? And they literally said, well, we research a lot like to get like the best algorithm. Cause like we research what kind of videos do the best. And we figured out it was family channels. And it really helped us that we adopted this kid. <laughs> literally saying adopting this child was just so good for business, making all that money. <laughs> like what the hell? So it all just seems like they did this for the views and that's why people are so upset. They did it for the fame and the riches and now that he isn't really working out for them anymore, like now that they actually made it to like a big time channel and they made a lot of money, they're like, 
we're finished now. We're not going to deal with him anymore. Like, uh, yeah. I really want to have a discussion about this. Do comment below what other details should we be talking about about this so we can talk about it in the follow-up video. Yes. Thank you so much for stopping by. I still have my regular schedule, by the way, on Fridays. But yeah, see you in the follow-up and on Friday. Okay, love you. Bye. Thank you.